so much to keep up. Good evening. This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's June 4th, 2015. This is a business meeting, and it's our feel-good meeting, <laughs> because it's so wonderful to recognize people as we do this time of year every year. So may I have the call to order? Um, Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Ling? Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Murray? Here. Mrs. Hartle? Very good. And will you join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The adjustments to the agenda. We do have a couple of adjustments. Um, I am going to eliminate from the agenda uh, what stands as uh, number uh, 10.4.4, Food Service Director. Um, I'm not ready to uh, address that at this point in time. Uh, so that will be eliminated from the agenda. And then I would also like to uh, take all of the appointments, 10.4, and move them up right after recognition so that we can recognize um, our retirees and we can recognize our first year continuing contract professionals uh, together. Um, and then we will take uh, the business of first year, third year, and, and second year. I mean, uh, third year and second year, which are the remaining items. Okay. And we have the superintendent's report. We do. Um, there are, as uh, many of the folks here know, there are far too many activities going on uh, in celebration of teaching and learning at every phase level. Uh, more than I can uh, really speak to at this point in time. And we've got a, some other important business. Suffice it to say, um, the activity level is high, student um, excitement is growing, uh, spirits are good, and we look forward to closing our 2014-2015 uh, school year and having it have been a great year for learning here in Scarborough. Um, I did uh, give... Uh, folks uh, on the board a preliminary or tentative uh, schedule for you to, to look at in terms of the um, Board of Education meetings. We do want to get these scheduled um, and get the, um, the, the logistics taken care of. So please uh, take a few moments. If you see a, a conflict or you have a question about these tentative dates, give me or Kelly a call. Um, Joanne, I think you were going to speak to continuing ed graduation? Yes. Last night we had our adult ed graduation, and um, it's always a feel-good moment at that time to uh, see these adults come back and uh, pursue some, uh, further education. Last night, uh, seven graduates were awarded high school diplomas, and eight graduates were awarded CNA certificates. And so it's really uh, a nice feeling to know that we opened up opportunities for um, adults in this community. Very good. Thank you. Um, this is last, my last note, but it's a very important one, and that uh, relates to all of us uh, here in the schools looking forward to securing the budget that has been endorsed by both the town council and the school board. Um, voting uh, is happening on weekdays leading up to Tuesday, June 9th, which is next Tuesday, They're voting all day, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And um, uh, uh, people have asked me, so, so Superintendent, um, what happens if this budget uh, doesn't pass? And um, my response is that um, uh, if, in fact, um, uh, this uh, budget doesn't pass, uh, there, will be some, there will be some problems and there will be some concerns. And, and I think there's some trepidation on all of our parts about um, what would happen uh, should that, should that uh, actually be true. This budget that is in front of the voters does uh, take up and address a million-dollar shortfall in funds, um, and that shortfall has come from the state. So it really has nothing to do with uh, Scarborough. And uh, the budget 
Uh, beyond that, basically keeps us at level services. It basically keeps us at the level to open the doors again next year um, in the same way that we opened them this year. Um, we certainly are very appreciative of the one-to-one -one technology that's been approved for our high school. I keep saying it will be a game changer for our high school students, and we're very excited, very appreciative of that. That is not the budget that's being voted on. It's the operating budget that is being voted on, and in there, um, there is less than one-half of a percent uh, that's really allocated to any sort of new investment in uh, some of the mission critical work that we're doing. Um, if the school board and the town council uh, need to go back and reduce that budget further, um, then I can say in answer to that question, even the smallest reduction will potentially impact programs that people have come, students have come, parents have come to expect um, will be there next year when we open the doors. The more significant the reduction, <coughs> the greater the impact will be on the existing programs. Our progress has been good, we've been moving forward, but virtually at a snail's pace. And so anything that doesn't keep us moving forward will have us stall, and the progress will stall. That's at best. To the extent that the reductions are, are, are greater or more significant, um, I would have to say that it's likely that it would be the kind of response that would be setting us further behind. So th that's the best way and the most reasonable way that I can answer that question. The school budget, as has been put to referendum, is a very reasonable, very responsible um, budget. It, it's a budget that makes sense, not just for the schools, but for everyone in the Scarborough community. It is what's, it, it's, it's what's needed by the schools and as well needed by the community. So what I'm saying and asking is that people vote yes on the referendum, get out and vote, and, um, and please support that budget, pass the budget, let's do it the first time, and uh, then let's move on with the rest of the work that we have to do. That's my report. Thank you, Dr. Antisil. And the Chair's report, I just have a few things. Um, I did receive the resignation of uh, School Board Member Jane Lang, and um, on your behalf I have accepted that resignation. So. Jane will be uh, moving to the other coastline with her family, so we wish her well and uh, safe travels as she makes this uh, transition. Uh, secondly, um, Dr. Entwistle and I went to Piper Shores a couple of evenings ago, and we, we met with a nice group of, of residents down there. It was a very enjoyable evening. It was uh, encouraging to, to hear their thoughts and to have a chance to answer their questions was uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I think we both did. Yeah, we did. It was really, it was really nice. So, to all those at Piper Shores, thank you for your support. And finally, uh, Mrs. Murphy, Mrs. Shea, and I attended the school board rally last week Jackson. in Augusta. And, and oh yes, Miss Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we uh, went there uh, to ask our legislators to invest in kids by increasing the GPA funding for schools. We want to thank Senator Millat, who came out to meet with us. Our other Scarborough legislators did not come out to meet with us that day, unfortunately. But um, it, we, we really enjoyed the opportunity to go up there and um, really advocate for our, for our students and, and face those issues that our town and our state are, are in the midst of at this time. So that's the end of my chair's report. 7.0 committee reports, <coughs> Mr. Chiazzo. Uh, finance has not met since the last report, which I'm proud to report because our budget <laughs> is concluded from our perspective. So we're uh, patiently awaiting the results from June 9th. Um, I can't stress enough, as Dr. Entwistle said, that, that it's really urgent and important that we get people out and vote because um, the more people that cast their opinion one way or another, it, it, it really helps us determine the path forward. So uh, we've put a lot of work and effort and everybody on the board has done that. Um, it's been a very difficult process in terms of time commitments, but I think the results are very positive um, and I'm hoping the voters will agree with us and support us on the night. <coughs> 
communications met last week. Um, we've met pretty regularly the last few months to sort of gear up for the budget um, discussions. And last week's meeting finally sort of turned a corner of, yes, we need to continue to talk about the budget, uh, but we also need to start looking forward to next year too. So a couple of things that have happened over the last week that, that we've been working with is making sure that the information that's out there for people is correct. And a lot of times it gets convoluted and confusing for those that don't keep up on a regular basis. So a couple clarifying points. Dr. Emerson stole a little bit of my thunder, but Sorry. I'll let it go. Um, <laughs> this time. Yeah, this time I'll let it go. <laughs> um, so both the municipal and the school budgets are coming in with expenditures of about 4% <coughs> increase. So the gross expenditure for the municipal budget is 4.55%, whereas the gross expenditure budget for the school budget is 4.12%. It's important for people to understand that this is not a school spending spree. Um, where the, the difference lies is when the revenues come into effect. And as Dr. Emerson said, we've lost $1.1 million from the state. So that takes a big hit for our budget. Um, so I just want to make sure that people are understanding that. Your taxes are not going up the 8.2% that people keep referring to. It's more around the 5%, 5.5%. And, and I think when people start throwing out numbers that tend to be misleading, it causes confusion and, and people get scared with an 8.2% uh, number. So just want to clarify that. And again, voting, voting, voting is June 9th, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. town hall. And up until then. And, and up until then, yes, with a good excuse. Yes. Okay, so the policy committee has been meeting regularly um, approximately every other week, and we have a bunch kind of in process. Um, surprise for Mr. Mr. Chiazzo and the finance committee, we have a whole stack for you guys. Great. Once the budget is done, there's... Um, several policies that regard the finance committee and the budget whole schedule and how it's all rolled out that um, we feel like you would be better suited to look at and review. So congratulations. <laughs> We're annexing you to the policy committee once the budget passes. So, um, And this um, next Wednesday when we're meeting, I think, is at 9, and I believe Mr. Creech and maybe Mr. Legage will be joining us to talk about handbook stuff. So that is uh, that would be exciting to have guests. So um, also, um, our health, safety, and security task force meets next Tuesday morning. That's a cross section of town and school representatives, and just a wider cross section of the community um, talking about how to keep the town healthy and safe and secure. And also talking about feel good things. This morning I was at Wentworth at 8:30, arranging the new bricks that got installed, and that's. Um, doesn't sound like a feel good thing when you hear just that part, but it is really cool for me. I love the bricks and it's neat to see all the names and the kid names and you know people are getting them for um, as kids are graduating and so we're filling them in as we're ordering. I think there are about 50 today that went in and always on sale and we'll install again before the ground freezes in the fall. Um, but next time you're at Wentworth, look down because there's new new bricks that are seamlessly filled into those spaces. So. You got to look carefully, but um, if you ordered a brick in the last six or eight months, it's probably installed now. So, exciting times. Very good, Mrs. Massengill. The Bago Education Alliance met last month, and um, the Alliance School is winding down. So um, there are conversations just around the um, distribution of the assets that are left. Most of them belong to the district, out where the school is, and so. Um, Teachers are still committed to the students, obviously, through the end of the year, and um, wrapping things up, they're probably interviewing, and uh, Dr. Entwistle helped with resume writing and some uh, reviews with them, and so um, they seem to be doing well. Um, their next meeting is Monday, mm -hmm. so I'll have a further report and, uh, at that time. Great, thank you. Jackie? Yes, the negotiations, uh, committee ha has been meeting and we will have uh, one more uh, meeting with the custodians before the end of, of the school year. 
uh, I too uh, was at the day at the state house representing main school management. We also had a uh, board meeting prior to that. And I would l like to let you know that my term on the Maine School Boards Association Board of Directors uh, is ending, and if there's anybody here who would like to go for that seat, uh, let me know. I have the form. Uh, my term here is expiring, and I have, I will probably run for one last term, but uh, I'll let you know when the forms come out. <laughs> <laughs> I also had the pleasure of uh, being at the senior assembly the other evening and presenting a school board member with a gift Thank you guys. from the school board <laughs> and recognizing her as a school board person and telling her students what a great representative she has been of their constituency. Very pleased to have served with this young woman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Well, we'll just move right into 8.0, which is the student representative's reports, Kristen. All right. Um, the 7th and 8th grade math teams, uh, congratulations to both of them. The 7th grade team placed second at the state meet overall, and Connor Cantacy placed third as an individual, and Charlie Lang placed fourth. So congratulations to both of them. The 8th grade team placed fifth overall out of 27 teams. A group of students attended the MLTI uh, conference at UMO where they learned about collaborating with other schools and students um, regarding some new technology. On May 21st, the middle school celebrated their annual Wellness Day where students chose from a variety of recreation, leisure, and wellness activities. Um, and a big thank you to all the members of the community who took their time to volunteer and work with the students. Uh, up at the high school, we have a big commencement ceremony on Sunday night at the Cross and Cern Serena for all the seniors. Um, all the other classes are wrapping up uh, and preparing for finals over the next couple of weeks. And the spring sports teams are all headed off into the playoffs in the uh, upcoming weeks, so best of luck to them. Thank you. So with that, we'll move into 9.0, which is recognition. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, tonight is a special night. We get to recognize our retirees, um, and we also get to recognize uh, those teachers who have successfully completed um, three um, uh, probationary years, and they are moving on to their first uh, continuing contract um, year and for, for next year. I think we will start um, the recognition with um, our retirees. And Kelly, is there a list that I should be looking at? Or? You don't just know what it's in your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we would start with, um, am I right, uh, Barbara Hathorne? It is a fact, school secretaries run a school, and Mrs. Howard has run Scarborough Middle School for the past 27 years. The role of the school secretary is vital to the efficiency and success of the day-to-day -day operations of a school. What does that mean? It means Mrs. Howard oversees buses, lunches, fire drills, copiers, announcements, absences, paper, markers, heating, cooling, mail, keys, <laughs> purchase orders, field trips, report cards, calendars, and the list goes on and on. Amazingly, Mrs. Howard takes care of school business in an extremely calm and caring way. Even though she bows out of any limelight, her hard work and dedication does not go unnoticed by students, staff, parents, and all who visit our school. In fact, teachers are a little afraid of this little thing here. <laughs> Um, we wish Mrs. Howard much happiness and good health during her retirement and can only hope her organizational spirit lingers. Over here. <laughs> 
Thank you. Good luck. Um, Bogdan Kurlansky could not be with us tonight, but I would uh, like to recognize him. Mr. Bogdan Kurlansky has been a dedicated teacher at Scarborough Middle School for 40 years. He brings years of experience and wisdom to our classroom at our school. During his 40 years, Mr. K has shown compassion for his students and has made a difference in their lives. Bog possesses a wealth of knowledge, yet is modest about his accomplishments. Again, he shies away from limelight. He is a good person and an inspiration to those who have been lucky enough to learn alongside him. So this is Bog Kurlansky. Well, it's my privilege to honor two retirees from Wentworth this year for their contributions and their many years of service. It seems appropriate to maybe have you both come up together because they've been a, a duo for a very long time. So Val Raza and Leslie Fleming. <laughs> Leslie, you, you came up first, so I'm going to begin with you. Okay. <laughs> So, if you would like to have an interesting conversation, observe extremely healthy and interesting lunch concoctions, and likely share a laugh, join Leslie for lunch one day. She is a colleague who relishes being part of a team. She welcomes others into her room, often serving as the voice of reason, her colleagues say, by offering perspective in many situations. She's an avid reader. She shares her love of books. She's well-educated and has a wide experience in several different fields. She's been a musician, a journalist, a biologist, a researcher, and, of course, a teacher. Leslie is a constructivist teacher at heart. She allows each of her students independence and self-actualization within her 3-4 blended classroom setting. Leslie works to create experiences in her classroom where students can work collaboratively on projects and encourages her students to take responsibility for their learning. Students leave her class with a deep curiosity about the world. They ask good questions, they work hard to find the answers, and they're eager to write about what they have learned. We wish Leslie the very best in this next chapter. Val Raza. Val started teaching after many years of raising her three sons and living a carefree, self-proclaimed hippie lifestyle. <laughs> she, is <a> passionate <laughs> she is a passionate world citizen who brings international awareness to her students. She is a very creative teacher who uses real life to connect to the, st to the standards. For years, her fifth grade students have successfully transformed their classroom into museums, applying to be docents knowledgeable enough to guide the younger students as they visit and learn from their peers. Val is a child-centered teacher who is comfortable with learning being messy and fun. She has such a great way of engaging her students in conversation by connecting with each child as an individual. She's also a colleague who listens and cares and values her friendships. Val's ultimate goal for her students is to instill a love of learning and a thirst for knowledge as well as opportunities to gain the independent skills and perseverance to go out into the world and make a difference. It is safe to say we are all better for Val Raz's contributions. Mullen Martin is sick. I am replacing, no, I'm not replacing her. I'm speaking instead of her. <laughs> Miriam Collins, please come forward. The K-12 
K2 phase is bidding goodbye to two of the finest human beings we know. Miriam Collins is a generous, kind, tireless worker and a fierce advocate for students. As a wise expert, she is a high caliber student-centered teacher who focuses on the whole child. She has exemplified lifelong learning by embracing every challenge and never slowing down. Even in the final weeks before retirement, she came to a meeting about next year, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam has spent 42 years in Scarborough, long enough to teach children of former students and to work with a former student. She recently began to clean out her jewelry box, which perhaps is better described as a pin drawer, and proceeded to send dozens of cherished colleagues one of her beautiful pins with a handwritten note. Mm. Mrs. Martin received a purple heart for the courage she had in taking on two schools. I am wearing my advice from Miriam, think kids with heart. Miriam is looking forward to enjoying more time with her extremely supportive family who is here tonight. Her grandson Addison will soon be two. We are confident she'll be able to keep up with him. As she follows the trans tradition of her mother, Rachel Deans, who is approaching 95 and has been volunteering for the Scarborough Schools for as long as Miriam has been here. Some kind of record, I suspect. Miriam, congratulations and profound thanks from all those you have taught, young and old alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spot, Miriam, on the school board. <laughs> As I said, the K2 phase is bidding goodbye to two of the finest human beings we know. Jean King, who is not able to be here tonight, is also a generous and kind tireless worker and a fierce advocate for students. A high caliber student-centered teacher who focuses on the whole child, she has exemplified lifelong learning by embracing every challenge and never slowing down. She's still putting bulletin boards up. Jean has served 38 years in Scarborough, is looking forward to retiring with her husband. He has plans for lots of fishing. She's not quite sure how that will be. <laughs> Rather than think about retiring, she's focusing on volunteering at Pleasant Hill next year to continue her connection without taking work home. Ms. Ketch and I are going to tag team in our uh, appreciation for the retirees. I've been there for two years. I'm going to be the data person, sharing with you a little bit about their past. Ms. Ketch has been there for 30 years and can share a little bit more about some of the other details for our retirees that we want to share, <laughs> things that aren't on paper. Um, but before we call uh, the two that we were going to talk about from the high school, I'd just like to say a little bit about Betsy, Bob, uh, Jay, and Jerry. So it's a little bittersweet for us as I'm sure it is for the other schools, because um, not only we greatly appreciate the time that you've spent serving our students in our community, and we're going to sorely miss you, but in the same token, we are so happy for you that you're going to get a chance to go into the next stage of your life and enjoy retirement. So we will miss you greatly, um, but we're very happy for you, and we wish you the best. Um, I'd like to start with Mr. Jerry Hebert. Would you come up and join us, please? So Jerry has uh, been a teacher for 43 years. He started at Scarborough High School in 1972. He has taught English, Project Advance, which is the Syracuse University College program for high school students, speech and debate, and public speaking. He has also been a coach in an extracurricular position for the debate team for the past 11 years, and he directed a school play, a state one-act play, and he coached the golf team for two years. Uh, other uh, extracurricular experience, he was on the Congressional Debate State Champion eight consecutive years, Congressional Debate State Runners Up two consecutive years, served as English Department Chair for 34 years, brought the Syracuse University Project Advance to the high school and taught that program for 28 years, 
And I don't know when they started collecting data on this next stat, but according to my records, he has corrected enough <laughs> essays to stretch from here to the sun and back. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Jerry, he was also the winner on uh, Dancing with the Stars on season two. <laughs> Uh, but, Jerry, we greatly appreciate your service to our students and to the community, and Sue's going to talk a little bit more. <laughs> well, let's see. One of the things that um, I have always been impressed about Jerry is that he brought sort of the AP curriculum to Scarborough before AP was in FAD, and that was with the Syracuse program with Eileen Matrazo, and they went there every year to do coursework to stay certified as college professors from Syracuse in order to teach that course. He and Eileen have been teammates forever. Some of us remember them starring as Sonny and Cher on stage at our school. <laughs> I don't know that Eileen will ever be the same without her Sonny. <laughs> One of the things um, about Jerry is that Jerry, um, while Jay sort of brings them into the English curriculum as ninth graders, and works with them as ninth graders, Jerry wraps us up and helps us with them doing their senior essays and um, all of that analytical writing and things they're going to need for college, and as well as always being um, a faithful faculty member to do things beyond the classroom. Um, Dave made quite a list of the things that Jerry's done, department head, um, speech and debate in most recent years, all those state championships for that. Um, Jerry's just been a great addition. I'm sad to see him go because he's one of just a few people that have been there longer than me. <laughs> and I have a sneaking suspicion that means I'm getting older. <laughs> um, we will miss Jerry a lot. Jay Vance, would you please come up and join us? Thank you, Super was a great class. Really <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Jay Vance has been teaching for a total of 25 years. He started at Scarborough High School in 1999. Uh, Jay has taught English and social <laughs> studies and has been involved extensively in coaching extracurricular positions. Um, he was an assistant football coach from 1999 to 2002, a faculty advisor for the school newspaper, for Stormwatch, uh, and he did that for about eight years. Um, he also was a part of the Class B State Football Champions in 2002. <coughs> I believe there's a lot more statistics that go along with Jay, but he refused to give me anything else. <laughs> so my piece is short with Jay. We'll move it to Sue. So if memory serves me correctly with Jay, we offered him a job on the sidelines of the football field one, one summer day in August, and Jay started with us as a job coach for our special ed department, and he was sort of a leader when we were really starting to embrace transition for our high school students and how we could help all students be more successful with their next phase after graduating from high school. So Jay was kind of an integral part of that. For the last number of years. He's been a freshman English teacher, still working that grammar. Every time I'm in his classroom, they have a moment of grammar. So he's always working that. Um, I know that the freshmen love his dry sense of humor. In fact, Matthew Libby, who is um, a graduate and who went on to the Naval Academy, was telling me not many weeks ago how funny he thought Mr. Vance was and that he was probably the funniest teacher he had at Scarborough High while they worked. Um, Jay has, um, was someone who initiated the um, student newspaper. It had been dormant for a while, and Jay brought it back and had a lot of fun working with kids on their writing skills with that program. Um, one of the things I admire most about Jay and Jerry is the last few years they've really been cultivating other interests and things. They're an inspiration to me to start branching out. Jerry has done a lot with dancing lessons and things, and right now he's looking, been working hard at yoga. Jay, um, when he finished coaching for football, he picked up art, and I wish you all could see some of his drawings. He's an amazing artist. So um, we admire them both. We will miss them both. Thank 
you so much. So I have the privilege of recognizing uh, three individuals tonight who I have such incredible regard, both personally and professionally. Um, Betsy Walter, and if you could support me up here. <laughs> so, 29 years ago, Betsy joined the Scarborough School Department. She was 10 years at the main office at Bethworth, and for the last 19 years, she has been the original special services testing secretary, originally at Wentworth, but most recently at the high school. Quite a suite at the high school was created for her. Um, she has created and implemented efficient strat uh, procedures that have ensured our uh, regulatory compliance, which is critical in special education. She's become so efficient that we just keep giving her more work to do, <laughs> including our main care billing, which I think is what put her over the top for retirement. <laughs> In 1986, uh, George Jenkins was the Wentworth uh, principal, and he interviewed Pepsi, and this is about how it went. Are you Elizabeth Waldron? Yes. Can you be here Tuesday at 8 a.m.? Yes. Welcome to the Scarborough School Department. <laughs> Comments that people have shared about Betsy are that she has a charming and magnetic personality, compassionate, a talented artist both in photography and ceramics, meticulous, insightful, an amazing multitasker, thoughtful, hardworking, thorough, fun, respectful of all, a generous lis listener, and an exceptionally smart woman who is a rebel. <laughs> when I asked Betsy what some of her career highlights were, her response was, I've come to work and done my job for 29 years. And it's really that simple, yet that complex, what she's contributed for us. Now she's decided to sell everything, buy an RV, and she's going cross country. And I wish I could have that spare bedroom there. <laughs> <laughs> Jean Kelly has been our gifted and talented math teacher in Scarborough for the last 27 years. She actually started as a parent volunteer at Bessie School when her son was there. And before she knew it, she was a part-time GT teacher, but she never had a job interview. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what the middle school has written as their yearbook dedication best shares Jean's wonderful talents. Mrs. Jean Kelly has been a dedicated teacher at Scarborough Middle School for the past 20 years. She has been in the district for a total of 27 years. Over the years, she has demonstrated infinite commitment to the well-being and achieving of her students. Mrs. Kelly has cultivated students' curiosity and interest in learning while building and destroying balsa wood br bridges, sewing geometric designs, constructing roller coasters, and countless other math and science related activities. She simply makes math fun. With unwavering enthusiasm and high expectations, Mrs. Kelly has encouraged students' interest in the world beyond the classroom through the start mar stock market simulations and crime scene investigations. <laughs> Myriad math team trophies have been earned under her leadership, and there is always popcorn to celebrate. In fact, there were delectable treats to honor many successes, muffins, cookies, and pie. pie. <laughs> Never will we celebrate Pi, P-I Day, quite like we did on March 14, 2015, at 9.26 a.m. and 53 seconds. <laughs> Mrs. Kelly's passion for teaching and devotion to her students can best be measured by the number of students who come back from high school, college, and their careers to visit her. 
We wish Mrs. Kelly all the best upon her retirement and can only hope that she will come back to visit us when she is not dancing, reading, walking, gardening, traveling, organizing, baking, perhaps golfing, and spending quality time <laughs> with her husband, children, and grandchildren. And I can tell you um, that Jean has already signed up for a modern dance class, voice lessons, and an engineering course. So she's well on her way <laughs> to embracing retirement. Foster is unable to be with us tonight, um, but he has heard my comments already. Thirty years ago, I was hired as the 5 through 12 um, social worker for the school district. During my first year at the high school, there were uh, significant staff and student events that made it an easy sell for the high school to have their own full-time social worker. Hence, Bob Foster was hired 29 years ago to fill that position. During his time here, Bob achieved his licensure as a clinical social worker. He spearheaded a significant statewide initiative which developed hospital school transition uh, teams for students. He met his wife, Mary, who was a junior high principal at the time, at a, um, a school conference on the Myers-Briggs personality um, <laughs> style, and I guess they connected. <laughs> he coordinated many school-wide programs and events that have supported students social and emotional needs. He's taught the exceptionalities course to many of our staff, and he continues to teach in retirement at Southern Maine Community College. When people talk about Bob, they say he is like a calm breeze, soothing and comfortable, humble, selfless, trusting, a tenacious advocate, wise, good to the core, dedicated, compassionate, dependable, thorough, caring, knowledgeable, thoughtful, a sensitive new age type of guy. <laughs> I know Bob will enjoy spending more time on his music, particularly guitar and vocals, advocating on a local and state level as he adjusts to the empty nest syndrome as his youngest daughter is off to college next year. So congrats to Bob Foster. I don't need a stand for this one. <laughs> I know. Um, it's my pleasure to have Judy Campbell. Please come up. <laughs> Judy started her career in Scarborough in 1986 after being a director of dietary and food service in hospitals and nursing homes. During her career in Scarborough, Judy has made our school lunch program a model for the state. She has worked diligently to bring nutrition into the classrooms by working with staff and students to understand the importance of nutrition. She was one of the first food service directors in the state to introduce choice and a la carte menus. In 2008, the Let's Go program recognized Judy for her participation, insight, and direction for her work with other food service directors in getting the program going. She initiated a wellness committee for Scarborough Public Schools, she has represented Maine in Washington at the White House for school nutrition of schools and has been a strong voice for school lunch and breakfast programs. She has also helped to develop the backpack program for our students and became a model for area schools. We would like to thank Judy for all of her wonderful accomplishments in making our school nutrition program a model for the state. We wish you the best and have fun. <laughs> Kristen Murray, if you'd come up, please. All right. And I'd like to say sit back, relax. This is going to take a minute. <laughs> 
So Kristen Murray has been on the school board now with us for two years. So she graduates on Sunday night with a GPA of 94.63. Mm -hmm. so she's been on the honor roll, the high honor roll, and she's among the top 5% of the class. She received the Smith College Book Award in 2014, the Women's Literary Union Creative Writing Contest in 2014, nominated for National Youth Leadership Forum in February of 2014, SMAA All-Conference Honorable Mention in Field Hockey and in Ice Hockey during 2013 school year, Field Hockey All-State Team in 2014, Field Hockey State of Maine Academic All-State, <laughs> Ice Hockey All-State Second Team in 14-15, Ice Hockey All-State Academic Team in 2014, Ice Hockey Four-Year Letter Winner. She has worked at Beals Ice Cream, Higgins Beach Inn, and for her mom at Claudia Murray Photography in sales. She has been a volunteer with the American Red Cross Blood Drive, a National Honor Society Dodgeball Tournament co-chair, <laughs> the Clothing Drive Collector in 2013, Youth Field Hockey Coach in 2013, Youth Ice Hockey Coach in 2013. She conducted the new student tours in 2012 to the present and the Freshman Orientation Day leader all four years. For extracurricular when she had free time, <laughs> she played tennis, she's been in the National Honor Society, she's been a mock trial team uh, representative, she's been a student representative to the school board, obviously, she's belonged to Natural Helpers, she's been on the lacrosse team, she's been the class treasurer in 2011 to, to the present day. She's been on the field hockey since 2011 and the team captain in 2014. Ice hockey, winter 2011 to the present, and team captain 2013 to 2015. She speaks proficient French. Kristen is going to go to UPenn as a part of a five-year dual program in healthcare management, one in nursing, one in economics, and her parents have been told that she's one of four students accepted into that program. So proud of you. Donna? Kristen also is a Kiwanis Scholarship winner. Run the gauntlet, kiddo. Congratulations. Congratulations. we couldn't roast you. you know. <laughs> I've had the privilege of um, watching a lot of contests and plays and musicals, and probably in the two years that I've been here, the single most exciting play that I have watched was when I was at Thomas College this last fall on a cold and rainy Saturday, <laughs> and Scow Hegan, who has probably won over 20 state championships and maybe 13 in a row, were playing Scarborough High School. 0-0 zero, zero throughout the entire game, corner with less than 15 seconds left, scramble in the front of the net, 2.1 seconds left, we score, Kristen Murray. <laughs> and I'm going to miss you. It's my pleasure to introduce the following uh, teachers who are moving uh, on to a con continuing contract 
status, and I'd like to ask all of them to come up and please stand here next to me if you would. Jack Aceto, Claudia Dolan, Lauren Fine, Aaron Landry Fowler, Rene Nianutse. I've only been practicing that for three days. <laughs> But I can say bonjour, mon ami. Comme ça va? <laughs> Toby Walsh and Dan Willie. Please join us. Is Jack here? He is not. Ms. Dolan is not here either. She is due June 6th, so I think she's at the right place. <laughs> this is not worrying me by being here tonight. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, Lauren Fine. Um, Lauren is, uh, in our language uh, arts department, she teaches um, AP Lit and Comp in English 10-4. Um, she has her bachelor's in English and her master's degree she received at Tufts University. Congratulations, Lauren. Congratulations. Congratulations. When you retire, there's a much longer. <laughs> so you've got about 30 or 40 years. Congratulations. Uh, Aaron Landry Fowler. Uh, Aaron earned her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Montserrat College. Thank you. Uh, her, her teaching certification she got at the Main College of Art. She works in our Fine Arts Department and currently teaches Art Foundations. Painting, Advanced Drawing, Illustration and Design, and Painting too. It's my pleasure to move you to the continuing contract. Congratulations. Rene received his bachelor's degree at the University of Togo, his master's degree in marine resources management from the University of Quebec, his master's in French from the University of Maine at Orono. He is a member of our foreign language department and teaches French 1 and French 3 and currently is tutored to me on a regular basis so I can speak to students in French when I see him in the hallway. Rene. sure why, but uh. So Dan Willey received his bachelor's degree and master's degree in English from uh, UNH. He has taught in New Hampshire prior to coming to Scarborough High School. At Scarborough High School, he teaches in the language arts department. He teaches our English 9-3-A courses, English 12-3, and English 11-3. Congratulations, Dan. I just have one um, teacher this evening. Jennifer Libby was not able to be here. But she brings years of experience ranging from kindergarten through college. She taught phys ed to kindergarten students and methods courses at Springfield College to adult learners. Jen is currently a member of a four-person wellness team who integrates health in phys the phys ed curriculum for sixth and seventh graders. So congratulations, Jen. Diana Metro is, uh, works at our K-2 phase as an ESL teacher. She has her master's degree in second language education from the State University of New York, New Paltz, prior to working in Scarborough. Um, Ms. Metro worked as an ESL teacher in New York and North Carolina. We have benefited from her extensive knowledge of the WIDA standards and access testing, which is the state assessment for English profici proficiency. 
In addition, she has embraced our curriculums of Words Their Way and Math in Focus to teach academic vocabulary while assessing student comprehension skills through the BBOT building <laughs> curriculum. Welcome. Judy DiMucci works um, as a social worker at our Wentworth School. She received her master's degree in social work from the Arizona State University and is a licensed clinical social worker. <laughs> Mrs. DiMucci's prior experiences in Maine include working for the South Portland School Department and Sweetser. She brings with her a highly skilled ability to incorporate relaxation strategies, superflex social thinking curriculums, and the zones of regulation materials to support students in getting their minds and bodies ready to learn. I do just want to say a couple of quick words about Jack Aceto from the high school who couldn't be with us this evening. He is a high school special education resource room teacher. He has a master's degree in special education from the University of Southern Maine. He, prior to Scarborough, Mr. Aceto worked as a vocational instructor at Future Builder School and as a life skills teacher at Gray New Gloucester High School. He has made significant contributions with our special education team at the high school through implementing a study skills workshop course this year, and his PLT has further worked to define the grading rubric to best meet the needs of the students. So we enjoy having Jack come on board with us. Good evening. I'm here to uh, welcome Melissa Martinez, the school nurse for uh, Eight Corners and Blue Point, to our continuing contract group, and she received her nursing degree from St. Joseph's College and then spent four years in the Air Force, so thank you for her service in that. She then moved on to be a school nurse down in Texas for eight years, and she's been with us since then, and we're happy to have her. She runs back and forth or drives quickly back and forth between <laughs> Blue Point and Eight Corners every day and takes care of, of all of us. Um, I, I think we have one of our, um, our teachers here, is that right? Um, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, so I'd like to recognize uh, our high school teacher, um, Ashley. No, I'm sorry. Brianna. I'm sorry, I'm picking the... Okay. Um, Brianna <laughs> Kelman is um, a, a moving to a second year probationary teacher and she teaches Spanish at our high school. Thank you for being here. 
night. And we'll cover the rest of the, the um, teachers very, very quickly. I don't see anybody else with us. What's that? Nope. You saying? George with the 10.2. She's also here for the, the Spain trip. The trip to Spain. Okay, and we'll, you'll also be talking with us about the trip to Spain. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'll, have a chance to, I'll have a chance to introduce you again. Um, I think that um, for purposes of moving through, um, we do have quite a number of folks here uh, who are second year probationary teachers. I think you could take them as a group and I won't read them. Very good. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions, discussion? Very good. All in favor? Six plus one. And then we also have our third year probationary teachers. Um, again, a pretty extensive list. You could take them as a group. Mm -hmm. Move approval. Second. Very good. Any questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Six plus one. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> brings us up to our new business. Right. And for the minutes, the meeting of the minutes of May 7th. Move approval is presented. Second. Okay. Very good. Any changes? Deletions? No. Nope. All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you. And 10.2, notification of high school June 2016 trip to Spain. And do you, do you want to come up and speak with us? I'm Brianna Kalman. I'm just here to talk about a proposal for a student trip to Spain next summer. Uh, the proposed departure date would be June 22nd, so I tried to leave plenty of time for snow days if we have another winter like this one. <laughs> and um, so we shouldn't be missing any school. It shouldn't interact or um, affect that at all. Um, we'd be taking a nine-day trip to Madrid and the Costa del Sol, so through um, the north of Spain, all through the south along the coast. We would fly from Boston to Madrid and then from Malaga back home to Boston. Um, we'd be flying with, um, well, traveling the tour with EF Tours. It's the same group that we worked with for the French trip um, that I was lucky enough to go on to. Um, I used this company before. I took a group of 21 kids to Costa Rica a couple years ago. I had a really positive experience with the company, so I feel really comfortable working with them again. Um, so far, there's been a lot of student interest. I opened the trip to students in Spanish 3 and above with grades of 90 and above or with a teacher recommendation to try to open it up to other students as well. So the cost is $3,185 for the nine days. It includes everything except for lunches and that also includes insurance to cover health care, lost luggage and everything like that. So. Um, we will be following all the Scarborough School Board policies and rules throughout the trip. Um, we'd be working with a tour director who's from the country of Spain. They'd be with us the entire time, and we would be traveling on a motor coach throughout the country. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Any questions, comments? Yes? How do you sign up to be a chaperone? <laughs> 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 Sounds like a wonderful trip. He doesn't speak Spanish. No, I'm not. <laughs> You would need a teacher out. recommendation. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, don't I think definitely would not get one of those. <laughs> How many students will be going? Um, I set the maximum at 25. I'm personally hoping for a smaller group for the first time, um, but smaller than 25. Hoping for 12 to 18. So, and um, if there are 12 people, I'll be taking Helen Van Ness with me as my chaperone. So, since she took me to France. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Just, just a comment. I, I just want to um, thank Brianna for taking this initiative. She's one of our new teachers, and she's bringing this great opportunity uh, to Scarborough students. And that's the kind of initiative that we look for in our new staff, and thank you for taking that on. It's a, I've done that kind of stuff, and it's a big responsibility, as you know, because you have some experience. Yep. But thank you for um, opening those uh, doors for our uh, students. It's a it's an important thing to do. So yeah, I'm thanks. really excited. It's the best way to learn a language, so I think it's an awesome thing to offer students studying a language mm -hmm. with an extra piece. And it's fun. So and Malaga is not bad. No, <laughs> not too bad at all. Be sure to come back and let us know how it how it all goes. Well. Very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and that is the. Um, yeah. 
10.3, the superintendent authorization of summer hires. Uh, this is a typical piece of business that's handled at this time of year. Um, it's the authorization of the board for the superintendent to extend contracts during the period of uh, infrequent meetings during the summertime, at which point uh, we do um, present those candidates um, and their materials um, as we uh, are able to through the, um, through the regular schedule of meetings, as I said, which is infrequent. But the last thing that we want to do is to miss an opportunity with a great candidate, um, and so we like to be able to extend um, that uh, contract. Um, and so basically the motion is that you're authorizing the superintendent to do just that. Have Move approval. Second. Yes. Yes. How many openings, openings do we currently have? Um, well, we have all of the key players here, so I would say high school, David. Six. Middle school, Barb. Um, Wentworth, um, two, Kate two. saying. Um, elementary, a couple, one or a couple. Special Ed, Allison, five. So, and uh, I think that that's that's teaching staff primarily. Yeah. So we and and, and Ed Techs um, is a moving a moving number ed for us. Ed Techs, we don't need to approve. No. Right, right. Does that, sorry. Does that in, does that include the positions that we had in the um, the budget? For the new yeah. initiatives, that includes them as well. Okay. Yes, and they um, just I, I just so that you know, anytime it's a budget contingent uh, position, it's advertised as being anticipated, and we do not we cannot extend a contract there until um, we have the funding. Yep. Just wanted to make sure that was included in the headcount. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So we had a motion and a second and discussion and all in favor. Six plus one. Very good. And now, right before adjournment, I'll just give my fellow board members a chance to make any comments they wish at this time. Jackie? Yes. I would like to uh, thank all of our staff for a, what appears to be a very, very successful school year. Our coaches uh, who have uh, done an exemplary job and all of our students who have I, I was amazed last evening and the night before, uh, and I was sitting mis next to Mrs. Shea, and I said, my gosh, there's not an ugly student in this group. <laughs> I mean, it's really amazing what fine-looking students we have and how respectful they seem to be of each other and in our school. So I, I wish them well, and especially the seniors as they as they move on, and a huge thanks to the staff. And to this young lady on my right, uh, the numbers of hours she has spent not only as a school board person, but as an active member of her school and her community, I wish you well, and thank you for your service, and we hope to see you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And perhaps in five years when you graduate and you come back to Scarborough, you can run Run for the board. <laughs> full fledged three year member. <laughs> now, um, I'm just looking forward to everybody uh, on the staff being able to get a break this summer, including all of our administrators. Uh, need to get some time off and rest and refresh. So, um, just looking forward to some summer, and then hopefully the weather will cooperate with us very soon. And then uh, look forward to seeing everybody again in the fall. Kristen, did you have Good anything luck. you'd like to say? I'd just like to say thank you all. It's been a great experience to be able to be part of the board and get to know all of you. And uh, I've really enjoyed these past couple of years working with all of you. So thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Murphy. Um, I'm kind of sad everybody left before I got a chance to say this because I was lucky enough to have a lot of those teachers who retired. <laughs> and so did my kids. And so that was, I mean, obviously wonderful teachers and just added so much to the community for a lot of years and I love that we pair it with the continuing contract. New new kids on the block and 
you know, hopefully, I'm sure we'll have a lot of great experiences with them as well, but um, this is the feel-good part of the school year. There's a lot of stuff about the school board that's not so hot, but this is the stuff that feels good. And, um, and then rolling into the summer and the fall, that's all great stuff. So this is hopefully the start of a, a breath that we can take. So I like this meeting, and I'm glad everyone was here for it. I just want to say congratulations to the seniors. It, it really is sort of a great time, um, not only for us being on the school board to witness sort of the graduation and moving on to your next step, but it's great for our community. Um, it's something for all of us to be proud of, and as we delivered red balloons all over town, it was yes. it's really fun to see drive-by mailboxes with red balloons, and you know it's it's a, an exciting time for those families, and and so it is a good good time of year, and and congratulations. Uh, I, I would just like to acknowledge and express my appreciation to the high school and the and the middle school staff. I, my students are at those levels, and I know there is a ton of work going into recognition and end of year activities. And uh, in addition to all of the other day to day crisis management that goes on with the school, so I, I I know they may not show it, but I I know the students do appreciate that acknowledgement and making the end of year celebrations that much more meaningful for them. So I I appreciate the hard work and effort that everybody's putting into that. Um, I, I, this year feels really good for me for some reason about the, the, the vote and the budget and I hope we are proven correct. Um, the turnout so far has been wonderful, the support is really needed and uh, I know it's been a lot of struggle for all of us to stay focused and, and try and get the message out in, in addition to all of the other stuff that that you all are responsible for, so I very much appreciate that. And, and Kristen, I look forward to working for you in, in the next couple of years. To kind of, your resume at this point is better than 90% of the people I've ever worked for now, so let me know when you're back. I'll give you my CV, and hopefully you'll consider me for the position. And finally, I'd just like to thank the staff as well for all the work with you, our administrators especially and for, for your commitment to this town and to our, to our students. Um, but also I, I want to thank the town council and uh, the, the way in which we worked collaboratively this year. It was a significant effort to bring a budget that was more transparent, um, that answered all the questions in the community that, are, that had arisen, to try to clarify and clean up anything that was confusing. Um, I, I still do get phone calls like that as late as today, uh, questioning some of the numbers and, and some of the information, or even this evening I had one. So um, we, we still have to do that work, but it has been terrific this year to work with the council and uh, you know, bring along a, a budget that really is uh, a lean budget, but will help move us forward one more step next year. Uh, I would remind parents, please, Please get out and vote. This is the school board telling you we need your support. We need you to vote. Please go out and vote yes. Thank you. Do we have a motion to Oops. No, I, I wanted to say that I didn't include the superintendent and the central office staff in my thanks, and uh, I hope people understand that because of their leadership, it's why we have such great teachers and students. Mm -hmm. And a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All in favor? Six plus one, we are adjourned. Thank you. Go kill him. I will. I'll have to get in and it's only eight points. Stay safe.